Hey, so is actually technology more of a hindrance than a help when it comes to prepping and preppers? Now, follow me. We all depend on the internet. We all depend on technology to probably do a lot of things for us. Okay? I mean, for God's sakes, I mean, look, you can go on DoorDash and, and, uh, a Grubhub and all these places, you can order your meals and you can have them delivered right to you from your favorite restaurants. All right, in most areas. I mean, if you live way out in the sticks someplace, well, you your meal comes out of the creek or the lake out there and you're catching some fish, which is probably better off and it's probably healthier for you. But let's get back to topic. Is technology more of a hindrance than it is a help? You know, I mean, when you sit back and you really start thinking about all this, people, what do we do? A lot of people pay all their bills and everything on their computer or through their smartphone. Does people even really know what cash is anymore? Do we know what money really looks like? Have you ever really counted out a hundred bucks in twenties? Think about it. Most people use their phones, they walk up and they can swipe at a gas pump, they can swipe it at the grocery store or anything else, and they've done it all through their cell phone. They don't even have to have their wallet with them. Unless, of course, they're going to get carded for buying alcohol, then you have to have ID. You know what I'm saying? What would happen if you're so used to doing all these things, you're so used to making sure, and you only use the internet and technology and everything else and you base everything around that now it is a great tool okay it's a great tool to help you build your knowledge it's a great tool to help you build your supplies because yes you can go online and you can find a lot of great deals all right you don't have to go to the store you don't have to go to the stores anymore you can get all the information you want right on google there isn't nothing you can't Google, period. You want to know how to tie a knot? You can Google it. You want to know how to string a fishing pole? You can Google it. You want to know how to start a fire? You can Google it. You want to know how to survive a hurricane? You can Google it. You want to know how to change a diaper? You can Google that too. Point being is, <clears throat> everybody is so used to basically if you don't know anything, you don't have experience, you don't know what to do, they Google it. How many times have you heard somebody say, oh, just Google it. You can figure out exactly how to do it. So the day rolls around and the power is gone. The internet's down, the power grid's shot. Now what are you going to do? Do you know how to survive? Do you know what kind of meals to cook? Do you know how to cook meals that are fulfilling, taste good, and you doing it on a, say, Coleman stove or maybe over a fire? Can you actually do that? Do you even know how to start a fire? Have you practiced any survival skills other than Googling it. You see, it's one thing to Google something. It's another thing to actually do it with your hands. Because this way here, you've done it. You worked out the kinks. You figured out the problems. And you know how to do it without Google telling you how to do it. So is it possible that there is more of a hindrance in the long run for preppers or new preppers that are coming along. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of you older preppers out there that don't rely so much on, quote, the internet, the technology part, okay? But there's a lot of new preppers that are coming up and starting to prep. But if you base everything around your technology and the internet, eventually, if it goes away, 
you have to survive on your own. That's why I also always have said, you want to make sure that you have roadmaps. Now, for you that don't know what a roadmap is, it's a book. And you open it up. And when you look inside the roadmap, it shows you where you have to go. But you have to have a good idea where you are. You have to know how to read the map. So you know that if you're on this road, this is a highway. This is a secondary road. This is a dirt road. This is a class four road. Now, if you don't know what those are, Google it because you need to learn. Although if you do go out and you buy yourself a really good map, it usually gives you a breakdown right on the side and it'll tell you exactly what you're looking at. Train tracks, state forest, camping grounds. It'll list all that stuff for you. But you need to know how to read it. And you need to know how to use a compass too. Because if there's no internet and there's no power and there's total darkness and it's a grid down situation and you need to leave and get out of harm's way because something as bad has happened, you want to make sure that you know how to get there. You can get there from here. You just have to know how. <clears throat> so are we creating more of a problem with more and more technology taking control of our daily lives and less and less of us using our heads and thinking about what we really know, how we would survive, and the most common sense things to do in an emergency type situation? Does it really make sense to put all your eggs in one basket on all the technology and the grid and everything else? No, it doesn't. It's a great tool, like I said. We all use it. Probably 95% of everybody out there uses the technology and the internet nowadays. It's a fact of nature. But you also have to have knowledge to fall back on in case the technology isn't there. Because at that point, what's gonna happen? You are going to be lost. You will be stumbling around like a horse with blinders on. It's not gonna be fun. You're gonna go through a lot of pain and suffering because you're not gonna know how to do a lot of things without your cell phone telling you what to do or where to go you're going to be lost. And you really don't want to go down that road. You have the power, you have the control. You know, you can even go online, you can save stuff, you can print stuff off, make your own little book, your own emergency little planning book. I'm big on the planning books. To plan out so it's all written down, so when there is no technology, and there is no grid, and there is no internet, you have a plan in place. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope this really enlightens a few people to really start thinking about, don't put so much of your livelihood and your life or your family's life in the hands of technology. It's great while it's here, but when it's gone, there's gonna be a lot of you out there that are gonna be lost. Not a pretty picture, folks. Smarten up. Use the technology to your advantage. Make sure that you are really studying and trying things out. Go on a camping trip. Take your family. Cook over a fire. Get yourself a good cast iron pan. Cook over a fire and see how you do. Make sure you're using the coals because if you cook right over the fire, you're probably going to burn your food. Just a tidbit of information. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and I hope that everybody has a great day. I hope everybody keeps prepping. Stay safe. 
Keep the preps coming in. Use the technology to your advantage. And learn exactly what it is you need to know. And put it in your main knowledge book. This way here. When something happens. This computer kicks on. And you're good to go. So until next time. You all stay safe, keep prepping, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.